Dear fellow colleagues in the European Academy of Science and Arts, many warm greetings from the city of Kuopio, Eastern Finland. I've been asked to present some um, reflections on the artificial intelligence, AI, from the ethical and theological point of view. And my sincere apologies for not being able to participate in person to our meeting. So I will greet you via this video. Maybe maybe someday I will send a robot Jari Olkkonen with a perfect AI copy of my mind. He or it would manage, for example, the early morning wake up much less pain than I. But let's go to the point. Of all the technological innovation, innovations of the last decade or so, no technology has been more debated and evaluated than artificial intelligence, AI. Uh, usually technologies develop and are brought to commercial use without the kind of extensive public discussions that now surrounds artificial intelligence. Debates rage about self-driving cars, the threat of unemployment, um, the loss of privacy and the utilization of personal data, not to mention robotics entering our everyday world in the form of care robots and uh, even sex robots. In response to these worries, governments and organizations have published strategy papers outlining their policies and solutions of ethical conflicts. The British government published their strategy paper in the beginning of uh, 2018 and the spring saw the extensive French strategy paper. The French strategy has a revealing name for a meaningful artificial intelligence towards a French and European strategy. Also, the Finnish government is currently wrapping up its uh, strategy paper. Given all this, it is clear that AI is the su subject of a complex political, ethical and even philosophical debate. In the next few minutes, I will make some suggestions on how Christian theologians might contribute to the public debate in a constructive way. And my central suggestion is that such a public debate is indeed needed, because artificial intelligence has the potential to influence and shape our environment in a very intimate way. Um, and not just our environment, but how we see ourselves in it and how we treat each other. In other words, theologians should contribute to these discussions because AI-based technologies come close, closer than any other technology before it, to what make us human. AI technology reveals something crucial about what really matters about human intelligence. As is well known, the original aim of the artificial intelligence project formulated in the 50s was the creation of human-level general intelligence. Human intelligence, it was believed, was achievable by the help of computers processing language-like representations based on logical rules. Given enough processing power, 
such a system would be able to simulate all aspects of human uh, intelligence. Despite the enthusiastic beginning, it quickly turned out that logical rules are indeed a powerful way to simulate some aspects of human intelligence, namely those that are determined by clear rules. And these include, for example, or especially mathematical and logical problem solving and various kind of games. However, the logical approach achieved very little in other domains of human intelligence. It left out the complex interactions between humans and their physical, social and cultural world. By 70s, it was apparent that other approaches were needed. A number of robotic specialists and AI researchers reconceptualized intelligence and took it as a capacity, capacity to adapt to changing uh, physical, social and co cultural conditions. Such intelligence requires a physical body through which this interaction happens as well as complex capacities for de detecting and conveying social norms and emotions. In social and moral tasks, robots and AI agents are still at a very rudimentary level. Today, AI systems oftentimes exhibit a hybrid structure, a logical rule-based system overseeing or controlling more automatic pattern learning systems. <clears throat> the history of AI provides us in, in interesting lessons about human intelligence. The key lesson is the, is the realization uh, that the most distincting form of human intelligence is openness to others, communication and interaction. It is our extremely rich human capacity to respond to each other with reason, with emotion and responsibility that is still very much out of reach of AI agents. So it seems that AI research is beginning to converge on the truth that Christian theologians have emphasized for quite some time. For theology, the primary form of human intelligence is not logical problem solving, but the ability to be open to relationships and to be shaped by them. Indeed, it is one of the central tenets of biblical view of humanity that humanity is called to respond to God, to each other, and the whole creation. And it is this ability to be addressed and to respond responsibly that is the hallmark of human intelligence. Um, if we take this form of intelligence um, as the mo most central one, we immediately have to draw on the conclusion that AI is far from reaching human level intelligence. It is true that social and emotional uh, AI has taken some leaps in the last decade or so but it's still light years away from the kind of flexible social interaction of which even human children are capable. As I will suggest later, this fact has a number of crucial ethical implications. But before I expand on this, let me make a few remarks about the nature of technology from a theological point of view. Contrary 
to some popularly held views, uh, Christian theology has seldom tried to intentionally block or even hamper with technological progress. Indeed, many new technologies have quickly been adapted for religious purposes, like printing press during the Reformation time. <clears throat> for theology, technological innovations have their part to play in the story of humanity. Technology is here to further the human well-being and our common good. Given this, uh, Christian theology should adopt a positive attitude towards emergence, emerging uh, AI technologies. And such technologies might be able to contribute to the common good in, in many ways. Even today, AI technologies are applied to medicine to develop new drugs and treatments. Uh, in scientific research, AI systems can help to manage data and produce new hypotheses. Automated traffic could diminish mortalities uh, significantly. Interesting developments in communication technologies might be inside as well. More efficient and trustworthy translation devices and software, for instance. For instance. Perhaps uh, in the near future, people will be able to understand each other better over language and even cultural boundaries. And this would greatly contribute to the good of all humanity. Even now, AI systems work with doctors, lawyers, uh, um, civil servants, and, and many, many other areas to solve uh, different practical problems. Given the almost infinite spectrum of applications of uh, AI technology, some philosophers and intellectuals have suggested that AI will finally deliver us from all evil and even bring us to paradise on earth. The, tra the transhumanist Ray Kurzweil, for instance, has claimed that after AI develops superhuman intelligence, it will be able to solve humanity's problems. Perhaps humans could even eventually leave their biological bodies behind altogether and live infinitely in a digital world. Against such, such utopic visions, many have voiced their concerns. Interpreter Anoir uh, Elon Musk and physicist Stephen Hawkins have proclaimed that AI is the biggest threat to the existence of humanity. A super intelligence system might take over our world completely and submit it to its own aims and purposes. It might end up destroying the human world in the process. In the face of utopian and dystopian visions of the future, uh, the Christian theologian would advise caution. We have good reasons to be hopeful and not give into despair. There is already extensive public debate going on about AI and superintelligence takeover scenarios are unrealistic. We do not even know how such super intelligence could be created right now. Uh, the creation of such uh, systems as well as 
knowledge about its possible goals is more in domain of science fiction than science, uh, at least right now. And the dystopian scenarios of many science fiction movies, such as the Terminator, where the evil Skynet goes to war with humanity, do, do not keep me up at night. Similarly, the utopian visions of uh, some earthly paradise through technology seem more like science fiction than real science. <clears throat> True, uh, AI promises to alleviate some humanity's problems. Uh, I think there is very little reason to think that it could solve all of our problems, not to mention making humans immortal or saint-like in moral lives, lives. Uh, in this sense, Christian theology combined with a realistic take on the current science would warn against both overly dystopian and utopian future scen scenarios. AI technology will have an impact on many aspects of our society, but it will not end up destroying it or perfecting it. Uh, finally, let, it, let me come back to the ethical implications regarding the current limits of AI that I mentioned earlier. The main point was that current AI does not, uh, does not do a very good job in simulating the kind of intelligence that is the most important for humans, our social and moral intelligence. Although I have suggested that the worst dystopian scenarios will be unlikely, there are nevertheless genuine ethical worries here. The main worry is the possible trivialization and narrowing of the domain of social and moral intelligence. As I already point out, uh, Christian theology has a rich view of human beings and their moral and social capacities. Christians consider human beings as images of God, imago Dei. And this means, among other things, that individual humans are inviolable dignity and value. It also carries with it an idea of the proper goals of humanity. God calls us to take responsibility for our actions and respond to the needs and purposes of other people. To serve God and others is why we are here in the first place. In other words, theology has had a lot to say about how we should treat each other. We are called to respond in love and humility, not with selfishness and disdain. Given this background, it becomes clear why Christian theologians might worry about AI taking over important social and moral tasks previously reserved for humans only. The problem is that AI agents are not actually moral agents, or at least not yet. They are not nearly as responsible to moral and social considerations as we humans. Furthermore, they lack the ability to be responsible and to take responsibility for their actions. Take care robots are one example. We are already seeing the robotization and automatization of caring. AI systems dispense drugs 
to the el elderly and even provide some measure of company. A question arises, are we not replacing genuine care and responsibility with a simulation? Are we not replacing love and responsibility with something that only mimics such deeply human responses? A robot might help a person to remember what drugs to take, but it cannot offer the kind of care and love, compassion, that humans are supposed to offer in such in such situation. We could ask we could also ask whether we are offering a technological solution to a problem that is ultimately a moral one. Perhaps there is something wrong with our political and moral values if we choose to outsource the care of our mm, the care of our elders to robots than to value their care enough to pay actual people or God forbid do it ourselves. Treating other people, especially vulnerable ones, with love and care is an end in itself, not a technological problem to be solved with the right tools. A theologian might also worry about the possibility of ruining at least some aspect of our moral agency altogether. Consider, for instance, for instance a scenario where AI agents would be common in everyday life, but they would still lack capacities for genuine responsibility and social flexibility. The boundary between humans, human agents and artificial agents would be more muddled than it currently is. And this might create a situation where it becomes more difficult to respond to genuine moral agents in moral and loving way. If people get habituated into treating human-like agents in an undignified way, it might make it more difficult to respond humanly to actual humans. In other words, the increasing automatization of human relationships might make us morally and socially dumber and more stupid, making us essentially more machine-like. I do not have the time uh, to make the argument here proper, properly. Uh, consider, however, the following. Moral and social capacities like love, compassion and care require training and skill. Traditionally, such skills have been called virtues and their opposite is like selfishness and hatefulness vices. Virtues do not simply appear but require conscious effort and practice. In a world populated by limited artificial agents, the praxis of such moral virtues, moral virtues might be uh, exceedingly difficult. We can already see this in the current state of our technological development. Think of social media. Relationships through the social media lacked the embodied, immediate and emotional interactions that we are used to. Much of our emotional and social intelligence is designed for face-to-face -face situations. It is moral, its, its moral responses can be easily disregarded when the partner of interaction 
is not present. It is much easier to respond in anger or disdain to other person through Twitter than it would be if you would be having coffee together. Thus, it becomes challenging to develop the kind of virtues that our social media driven age thoroughly needs humility, respect, respect and love. And the same lesson can be applied to AI. Maybe we will, will maybe we will need new saints and heroes to look up to those people who are able to develop virtues even at the great cost to themselves. Perhaps future saints refuse to conduct all their business online. Do not share their personal data with anyone and take care of their own elderly parents. Such a mind would offer a good example, not only for us, but also for the mindset of future AI development.